time now, ladies and gentlemen, for the light heavyweights, Michael Dute versus Luis Tavares. I knock people out. Oh, he lights out! It's over! We're gonna knock him out also. Perfect! One shot knockout. I take it to the deep waters, yeah? This looks like he came straight off the street. Michael Duke, when the bell rings, comes at you, this fly. There's no other way. It's not a sport, it's not a game, it's a fight. This is it! Left hook by two! He always wanted a nickname. I'm going to give him one. I'm going to call him the Dream Crusher. This crowd favorite was awarded Fight of the Night honors by Glory fans in 2016. Here comes Michael Dude. <laughs> Pound for pound, he may be the most exciting fighter in all of combat sports, Joe. You know what you're going to get when it comes to the dream. Yep, he's coming in and he's looking to knock you out. I mean, he wants to stay patient. He tries to stay patient. But when the fight starts, there's no holding the Dutchman back. Straight to the top. I want to become champion in glory. I don't care what people think about me, you know. I'm very outspoken. Some people can mistake that as being arrogant. Some people like it, some people don't. All of my opponents, they are really just standing in my way. They're just there to get beat by me. He won his much-anticipated debut by split decision in Rotterdam. Here is Luis Tavares. Luis Tavares, this is his fourth fight in glory, Joe, and he's left a little bit to be desired considering how much hype surrounded him when he signed. Yeah, when he signed, he was very vocal that he wants a shot against Artem Vahitov. He did fight Vahitov back at Glory 9, New York, and since that moment, he's wanted to fight the champ again. He came in, had a, a, a tough split decision win against Arthur Gorloff, and then had a, a lost split decision close fight with Felipe Micheletti. So he wants to get back. He wants to keep climbing the ranks and getting these big fights. And he's got a big test in Michael Du. One thing you want to do is, well, maybe you do want to do it. Michael Duke said, I'm not going to get riled up. I'm going to stay calm, going to be patient, not going to talk trash. Well, Tavares poked the bear yesterday when he shoved Michael Duke in the face during their stare down. Yeah. It was Tavares thinks that it's a good idea to get, you know, do wild, get him aggressive, get him emotional. This way he'll make mistakes, open his chin a little bit, which we have seen in the past. But speaking of Michael Dude, Michael Dude says he thinks that, you know, he's in my head, but really I'm in his. So, I mean, they're playing the game with each other. Both experienced guys. A fantastic athlete, Luis Tavares, was signed to Rotterdam. One of the popular club soccer teams in the Netherlands, and at one time one of the best in all of Europe, decided to become a kickboxer instead. Here is our tale of the tape. Three versus five, Netherlands versus Netherlands. They're both 29 years old. Their height and reach almost identical. With professional experience, the edge goes to Luis Tavares, the number three ranked. 54 fights for Duke with a 47% knockout ratio, and this is Duke's 14th glory fight, where this is Tavares' fourth. 
My key to glory for this bout is for Tavares to stay technical, stay defensive. He really prides himself in having better ring IQ than Dew. He needs to use his movement, mix his strikes and angle. Michael Dew, he needs that aggression, but he needs to control it. He needs to mix his knees and kicks. He's got some really good low kicks and watch out for his counters, especially in his left hook. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this light heavyweight matchup is scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner. All but three of his 14 glory bouts have ended in knockout. His professional record, 43 wins with 11 losses and 20 career knockouts. At six feet, three inches tall, 1.91 meters, he weighed in at 208.3 pounds, 94.5 kilos. Fighting tonight out of the Netherlands, ladies and gentlemen, here is Michael, the Dream Crusher, Doom! His opponent opposite the ring and fighting out of the white corner, a European champion in two different divisions. His professional record impressive. 60 wins with just eight losses and 22 of those wins coming by knockout. At six feet three and one half inches, 1.92 meters, he weighed in at five time and at an even 209 pounds, 94.8 kilograms. He fights tonight out of Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the infamous Luis Tavares. And your referee for this contest is Paul Nichols. Yo. Gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves if you like. Push back. Judge, judge, judge. Time. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Fight. This could be over in a hurry. You would think the longer the fight goes, though, Joe, it's better for. Luis Tavares, correct? Yeah, but I mean, dude has this stamina where he can continue to come back. So, I mean, I wouldn't necess necessarily say that it would be an advantage for Tavares. But on paper, yes, you can say that. But seeing Duke fight, he's been in extra round fights with great energy. He's been training hard. Who could forget that fight of the year in 2016 that dude had with Daniel Olungo with four rounds? That was at collision one. The fight of the night there for sure. Rico Botter, a bit of a fizzle because of Botter's injury. They'll do it again, of course, in December. And both guys are really known for their punching power, but I'd like to see them mix their kicks as well. There you go. We see Duke using the low kick. Tavares used the body kick. Duke's last fight, Glory 64 against Donaghy Abena. A loss, a split decision loss. Many people felt Duke won that. Donaghy Abania would go on to get not one, but two world title shots. Duke says that didn't hurt. Yeah, but Tavares did that with a stance switch. You see him in orthodox, quickly changed an angle to south pawn through that straight left. Right there it is again. He's going to try to set it up. That's the ring IQ he feels he has the advantage in. Tavares ready to unload that left leg. Duke sends him to the canvas, not a knockdown. We've seen the damage that Duke can inflict with the left hook. Two knockouts in two fights one night, total time less than a minute. Yeah, that's nasty power. His left hook is just nasty. Body shot from Tavares. Yep, playing the game a little bit more. Duke now switching <laughs> I was going to say. Yeah, he wants to match what Tavares did. Just to show, hey, I got it too. Doesn't want Tavares to get any mental advantage. You see Duke ready for that counter left hook. He's calling Tavares on. Yeah, he's letting Tavares throw first. He wants the counter shot. Nice right hand. hand. That got Duke's corner fired up. Ooh, that counter left hook. Some good eyes from Tavares. Liking his work from the southpaw. But that opens up a nice right hand for Duke. Another one of his power shots. 
Side low kick from Duke with a clubbing right hand from Tavares. Good exchange there for Tavares. Yep, good combination work. But he knows he has to be careful with combinations because that counter's coming. He's got to hit and move, get out of range. Just spoke about the man. There he is, Donaghy Avena. Coming off a tough knockout loss to the champ, Alex Pereira. Good to see him in good spirits, healthy and happy. Yeah, 21 years old. He's got a lot of fight left in him. Luis Tavares, the infamous, says he likes to counterattack there, but in round one, it seemed to be two doing that more than Tavares. Yeah, Tavares seemed to be going first, you know, trying to mix, kick well. You know, good start to the to fight for Tavares. The dream crusher, Michael Duke. Signature strikes, left hook, right hands, everything, you know, coming from the power in his hands. But I do like his low kicks. I like when he mixes it up. I think we need to see Duke be first a little bit more this round. There's his wife watching and cheering on. Oh, well, she's not cheering on, she's just watching. She knows she's cheering, there's no action right now. <laughs> she's gotta be a little nervous. They got three kids at home. Yeah, it's a family affair. All five judges scoring round one to Tavares. Oh, Tavares must have been liking that southpaw from round one. Starting round two with it. You see Tavares much more busy than round one. Tavares playing smart, hitting, getting ready to exit because he knows what's coming. Wait, Tavares not really hesitating being the, the first guy to throw punches. Yeah, but he's not overthrowing them. That's why it's the smart move. If he sits on it, now he's trying to sit right. on it when it's the right moment. Right. But the first few punches, they're feelers. See, he's trying to jab, trying to feel to get a reaction from Duke. Then he's going to try to counter the counter. Oh, good straight right hand from Tavares. I think Duke's got to go back to his low kicks, change it up, try to be first. Or does he maybe try and lure Tavares into a brawl? That's one of the strategies he can do. That possibly be better in the third round. Looked like Tavares was hurt there for a second. You know, both of these guys would love a top oh. left hand. That buckled Tavares, and here's Duke's moment. He's going to close in now as Tavares backed up against the ropes. Got oh. hit again. Counter punch from Tavares. And now it's the fight we expected and hoped for. Yeah, but we knew it was coming eventually. But Tavares is content with his hands low. Scary against Duke. He's moving his head. I think Tavares earned Duke's respect during that exchange because Duke was going in for the kill and is now backing up again. Nice jab from Tavares. See if Duke's going to open up soon again. Left hook from Dutes. Close round here. Yeah, Tavares is the busier fighter, but when Dutes landing, it's doing damage. That's the low kick from Dude I like. And Joe, you said the low kicks that hurt the most are the ones you can't hear. Yep, those are the thudding ones. Nice high shim. The foot slaps are just, they sound nice. But when that thud of the shin lands, that's what's hurting. Duke needed that round considering he lost the first round on all five judges' scorecards, but we'll see what they how they score that. Dude had him hurt, Joe. Yeah, he had some good moments. He waited, boom, that left hook. Nice and quick counter. You saw him come, try to throw a, a jump knee. Kind of pawed the hands, slipped the left, threw his own left. Good power, but Tavares had some moments coming back himself. Landed a good knee here. Stepping in, mixing his southpaw in his orthodox stance. 
But he landed some good punches, landed a left hook and Dute in that exchange. Those are the punches that back Dute off. Yeah, yeah. They definitely respect each other's power. You can even see in Tavares' corner, head to rule by Rack, one of the top ranked middleweights in glory. Gum shield, as they say in Great Britain, in America, we go with mouthpiece. Not sure what the German word is for here. I'd say mouth guard. Surprise there, Joe, all five scoring that for Tavares as well. Yeah, I, I thought a lot of would have given it to Duke, especially doing the most damage with that left hook was the most damage in strike. Well, if you're pulling for Tavares, you'd say, hey, outside of that left hook that he caught Tavares with, yep. that was our round. Yeah, I thought it would have been a little bit more split from the judges. Well, it's open scoring. Let's see if somebody tells Duke he needs a knockdown. Now Tavares coming forward. Yeah, he's slugging punches and twos. Dude, much closer in strikes in round two after being dominated in the first, at least by strikes landed. Tavares back in the southpaw, mixing his kicks, mixing his angles. And a nice well left to the body to finish off that flurry. Yeah, nice angle off. A nice Lomachenko shuffle step. Took the outside angle to power punch. Dude's right hands landing. Oh, Tavares trying to bait Dude in. I like Tavares attacking the body. He's gone to the body a few times. Doesn't seem like Dude likes it much. One, two from Tavares. Tavares is feeling it in there. Not too many people have the cojones to taunt Michael Duke. Yeah, I mean, he's there. He wants Duke to open up. His plan was to get Duke emotional. The winner of this will take a huge stop, huge step rather, towards title contention. Which one of these guys would give Alex Pereira a better fight? I think they both have some unique qualities that would make it a tough fight. I mean, Abena to stay technical. Uh, sorry, I mean, Tavares to stay technical could do a good job against Pereira, but Dutes' aggressive power could give Pereira trouble as well. We haven't had anyone really pushing back up Pereira. Duke could do that. Corner of Duke wanting him to open up. Well, he's got 30 seconds. He needs a knockdown. And he's found that right hand quite a bit. It doesn't seem to be hurting Tavares at all, even though it sounds like it. Left hook there for Tavares. 10 seconds to go here. And we've seen Duke get a finish with 10 seconds left in a fight against Murad Bouzidi. So up to the last punch, Duke is dangerous. If he's already thrown his last punch, though. And he has. Not a typical Duke performance. It was all Tavares tonight. Yeah, he, he seemed well to do Tavares. Hit, move, was able to evade the counter shots from Duke. The decision from Dusseldorf when we return. I'm here with undefeated German heavyweight and new Glory signee, Michael Smolik. Welcome to Glory. What did it feel like to sign that contract? It's so great. It's, it was my dream. And now I'm here. I um, appreciate it. And they, they kind of threw you right in the fire against another German, Mo Abdallah. If you could, explain where this rivalry started and how it got so big. He tried to um, fight me like two years ago. And he asked me and asked me and asked me. and. My ex-management, my former management and the TV 
what not, was not interested in him. He's always pushing forward. Yeah. That's his style. Does that suit well to your... It's very good for me. I love that. I love it when they come to me so I don't have to come to them. What concerns you the most about his style? I don't care about his style. It's, I don't care about it. Nothing concerns you about no. him? You don't think he can knock you out? No, he can't. He's too slow. Well, hey, viel Glück in German. Good luck to you. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome to Thank glory. You. Thank you, Jim. We welcome you back as we turn into the highlights of Michael Dute and Luis Tavares. Yeah, good fight for, for Luis Tavares. Seemed to mix it up well. You know, Duke did land some good punches, but Tavares did a good job at being first, evading the counters, and trying to come back. But that was that nasty left hook that Duke landed in the second round. You know, even though he came forward, did a, a lot of damage with that punch, the judges still gave it to Tavares. Round three, Duke seemed to be just relying on those counter shots. Tavares attacking, moving, staying well, switching stances. There's that nice angle off to, to attack and attack the body. So. I mean, great fight, a lot of good output from Luis Tavares landing 64 of 138 strikes. Most of it coming from his boxing, but did throw a lot of kicks, more than we've seen in the past. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout goes the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. All five of our ringside judges see them out and score them out the same. 30-27 for your winner by unanimous decision, Luis Tavares! Here with Luis Tavares, the infamous congratulations on the win, Luis. Good sportsmanship being shown here. A lot of people picked you to win this fight, but perhaps not as easily as you did. A unanimous decision. You won every single round according to every single judge. Why was it so easy for you tonight? Uh, well, uh, first off, let me uh, take a minute to uh, thank God for this uh, beautiful uh, victory. And uh, why did it look so easy? You be the judge. I did my thing as I uh, do always, so. What do you want to do next here in glory? A lot of people think maybe you could enter the title conversation against Alex Pereira. What do you want to do next? Well, uh, Alex, <laughs> he, uh, he slayed uh, a gorilla two weeks ago. And uh, if it's up to me, I'm about to slay the Indian. Let him come. Good luck to you. Congratulations on the win, Luis.